So Just Pearly Things uh, is back once again to debate Lauren Chen. Now, Lauren Chen is also a huge moron. Um, I once called her like a fascist Barbie or something like this. Um, and she tried to defend herself by saying, you let me hold your baby. Okay, I don't really know what that has to do with anything, but that doesn't take away from the fact that you're a weird fascist. She is literally like a Christian nationalist. Um, she used to go by the name Roaming Millennial. So this video is called Heated Debate, Are Women the Source of All Evil? <laughs> Which is definitely uh, just Pearly Things title right there, you know? Just the most outlandish anti-woman statement you can think of. Plaster it on like a t-shirt and then just wait for the, the clicks and the ad revenue. I don't disagree with everything Pearl says, but I feel like Pearl is someone who, I mean, I want to hear your thoughts on this. I feel like you kind of enrage bait people with your posts mm. because you'll post something really like a super hot take on on twitter and then like you'll make a video about it and the video in turn is a lot more nuanced a lot more uh, i guess rational um so sometimes i i feel like i'm i'm trying what just wait okay just pearly things and rational does not belong in the same sentence unless the sentence is just pearly things is not rational what what do you mean? I like how she starts off by saying what I just said about the rage bait thing, but then she's like, but your videos, you know, they're kind of rational. They're really down to earth. What do you mean? What? Which one? You mean the one where like just pearly things is brushing her teeth and talking about how women are the reason the Holocaust happened or something? I guess rational. Um, so sometimes I, I feel like I'm, I'm trying to... St I'm struggling to see like what your actual views are versus maybe what gets the most traction on X. So I'm excited for this uh, mm -hmm. uh, to have a conversation about it. But I guess the role of women in society is, you know, to be mothers, to be wise, to support their families. How exactly that looks is going to differ from people to people. That's one of the reasons why I don't necessarily associate with the trad movement. Um, I feel like trad refers to specifically almost the glamorization and in some ways fetishization of maybe like rural 1850s middle america at least on like what i see on tiktok um whereas i mean that's kind of true yeah i'm i'm not sure i understand what she's saying though is she saying she disagrees with just pearly things claim that women's role in society is to be mothers or something because i would have thought that lauren chen would agree with that so maybe i'm not following you know, I'm just uh, a mom who works part time from home and is you know, basically trying to do whatever I can to help support my family. Well, I would say there's character limits on X. So, you're, I mean, you're not going to get a full opinion with like, I don't know, is it 60 characters? But I don't know what tweets are you talking about? And I have like 18,000. So I don't know. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. If you can't give like a generally fleshed out opinion on Twitter, then you're just, then you're just stupid. You should be able to explain whatever it is that you believe small enough, like in a bite sized enough, true that you might not be able to include every little bit of nuanced detail, every little bit of context, fine. But I mean, to act as though her tweets, like what women are the reason everything goes bad in this world. Uh, is actually like, well, it's Twitter. I couldn't really elaborate on all the, the rational undertones on my tweet, you see? Like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> well, we actually, like, I do, I, I, I wanted to be specific here because I, I, I did pull some of the ones up. I sent them to you. I didn't want to, like, ambush you yeah, or surprise you or anything like that. Um, let's see. And the role of women in society. Sorry, I was thinking what the second question was. Well, I think it depends, like, what, what do we want it to be or what is it now? Right. And, mm -hmm. and I think right now it's like, we're not really doing much. We're not really having kids. We're not really contributing to the economy when you look at output. Um, so They're not? First of all, I thought Pearl talks a bunch about how women make up more uh, on average of the consumer base. So that would be stimulating the economy. So it's like, what do we want it to be or what is it? Because I wouldn't say women are doing what you described now. Okay, well, one of the things that... <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> 
Women are drivers of the American economy. This was made clear in 2023 when U.S. growth was powered by both women's spending and their historic labor market gains. As consumers, women are projected to control two-thirds of discretionary spending by 2028. <laughs> Way to go, Just Pearly Things. It's getting to the point now where what Just Pearly Things says, it's literally like the opposite thing is actually true. Women don't really even benefit the economy. You know what? I bet women are really benefiting the economy right now. No lie. Like it unironically feels that way. Okay. Well, one of the things that, um, like I spoke recently actually with, uh, Rachel's husband, Andrew, mm -hmm. and one of the, uh, tweets that I mentioned that I, I thought was kind of strange coming from you was that basically you said evil comes from women. Uh, you know, Andrew in his interpretation, he made a very, like very rational, very nuanced. Actually, this is what she means. It's, is it not true that there is a, a lower moral bar for women, blah, blah, blah. And it like, Andrew smart guy made a lot of sense. That Wait, okay. <laughs> Can we have a little more elaboration on how that made sense, please? How the fuck do women just by nat by default naturally have a lower moral bar? I thought that you guys are always whining about women being more emotional and being easily offended. I thought it was women that have the, the high moral bar. Too high, to the point that they're super woke, going Democrat. Furthermore, when she says uh, evil comes from women... I think I know how they're going to justify this, and I have a feeling it's going to be like, well, because every bad person was birthed by a woman, right? I bet it's going to be something stupid like that. That's not what the tweet was, and kind you of funnily it. enough, uh, you you tweeted out later to clarify, Lauren, yeah. yes, evil <laughs> does come from women. Yeah, well, because I would just look at every problem in society. It all comes from women. To be fair, I... <laughs> she actually just said it straight up. <laughs> Every problem in society comes from women. Really? What about all the problems uh, that happened before women had any say or ability to vote or anything whatsoever? Were they still, like, at fault then? I just realized this the other day, but did you know that Hitler was made by a woman? <laughs> <laughs> that proves it. Well, it's like you look at you look at the homeless. Most of them come from single mother homes. You look at school shooters. Most of them come from single mother homes. You look at criminals, rapists. Most of them come from single mother homes. Um, you Maybe that should tell you more about socioeconomic circumstances. Like single mothers tend to have to prioritize working to keep things afloat for the family. Therefore, they're not able to spend as much time with the kids. They usually are also disproportionately poor. So you're actually looking at people that have all come from rather poor socioeconomic circumstances. This is the most ludicrous conclusion. Like, it is so much more believable and understandable that, hey, we don't have a whole lot of money. So there's only one parent able to work. The kids are home alone a lot, left to their own devices. They kind of have to figure stuff out themselves. Mom is doing everything she can to just get enough money just to get by that might not lead to the best outcome. If anything, kids raised by single moms, what you tend to see is them not spending that much time with the mom. If the mom was super evil, the mom's not really around that much to pollute the mind of the child. She's out working all the time. So it, none of it, none of this makes sense. There's far more to do with socioeconomic uh, circumstances than just single mom. You look at what happens when women what happens when women get power so when men get power they build societies they do awesome things when women get power we're just not very good with it i, I just want hitler wait, men just build us ah oh, yes we men just famously build societies men also famously tear down societies but we're not going to focus on that part i, I just want hitler i mean i kind of feel like there's a lot of bad dudes, you know? Well, yeah, but there, there's also <laughs> bad queens, right? If you look at queens the last 500 years, mm -hmm. women are more likely to wage war. Women are way more violent with power, and we see that in society. Look at what This is one of her favorite talking points, that, like, more wars in the last 500 years were waged by women or something, apparently. Like, uh, okay, w were they justified wars? What, what was any of the context there? Women are doing in the court system today. What is more evil than breaking up a family? And women do that all the time. Yeah. So, so yeah, I would say most problems in society come from women. So that's Wait, the problems come from single moms, but then women are also the ones responsible for breaking up the families?
all these bad things are coming from single moms, but yet moms are also the ones breaking up the families so that they can become single moms? <laughs> huh? What? Oh, so yeah, I would say most problems in society come from women. So that's interesting because I watched your uh, conversation with Michael Knowles, which I thought mm -hmm. was really interesting. Single fathers do better though. Uh, actually, there's not enough data to really conclude that. But even if that were the case, that would again be because of a lot of unconscious gender biases, not because the man is just somehow intrinsically inherently better. For example, we know that single moms uh, are offered far less starting off salary compared to single fathers. Single fathers are literally offered more salary starting off than men with no kids or single moms. So yeah, there's an issue there. And in it, because I watched your uh, conversation with Michael Knowles, which I thought mm -hmm. was really interesting. And in it, you were very adamant that people need to take responsibility for their own actions. So mm -hmm. when it relates to women, it's not really an excuse to say, oh, well, feminism brainwashed me. You still made the decision to sleep around. You still made the decision to get yeah, an abortion. Like I th yeah, I think if you get an abortion, you're responsible. Okay. Right? Isn't, shouldn't we have that same standard when it comes to the rapists, the men? You made a decision, you're responsible. It's not really like, oh, but my single mother. Like you, yeah, many, yeah, many and, and they people are, have. And they are not really the direction I would have taken it, but still like, okay, fair enough. Also, yeah, good point, Holly. It's like getting an abortion makes you evil. Being a single mom makes you evil. Getting rid of the abusive partner also makes you evil. <laughs> There's no way for you, for women to not be evil. I'm glad that Lauren Chen is sort of calling Pearl out here using Pearl's own logic. Like, shouldn't the rapist be held responsible? Right? Like, don't don't say like, oh, but I had a single mom. That's why I'm I'm a raping murderer now. Like, shut the fuck up. But you have to look at there's significant differences between single mother and single father homes. And I can't help but notice that all of the men that seem to lack morals, they were raised by a woman. Right. But is maybe they weren't raised. Maybe that's actually the problem. Maybe it's that again, because there was one parent who had to be working a lot. They were left alone. So they had to raise themselves. Maybe that's really the problem. Maybe what you're seeing is a lack of positive parental influence in a child's upbringing. It has nothing to do with being raised by a woman. Is the answer then that evil comes from women? We are kind of leaving out the fact that, yeah, a man actually left the the, the, the parent or his family in that situation. Well, there are of, some most, situations of, where the time, no, a no, woman doesn't want the, the man but there. Most but most of the time men don't leave. Women are the ones that overwhelmingly leave. And if you really dig it, if you actually do the work and interview men that are, are the known to be like deadbeat dads, most of the deadbeat dads don't really exist. They I mean, they're, I they're exceptions. They're not the rule. So and, and if you. All right, let's look this up. 43% of American children live without their father physically present. Less than 6% of all fathers of minor children are single dads, but 20% are absent dads of all of their minor children. Okay, so yeah, the, the deadbeat dads don't exist. Like, just... Yeah, yeah, huh? <laughs> Census.gov disagrees with you, just pearly things. And again, like, do you see the difference here? We're looking at census data, actual statistics, She's basing this off of her anecdotes, off of her own little fucking stupid ass stories, her little conversation she had at a bar with a guy one time. It's ridiculous. So deadbeat dads don't really exist. They I mean, don't, I don't... they're exceptions. They're not the rule. So, and, and if you actually do the work and interview these guys, there's men that have spent hundreds of thousands of dollars fighting for their kids. And unfortunately, we're in a, a society where women can claim abuse. You know, they could say he emotionally abused me and not see his kid for years. What, what's so, the real, real quick? What's this? This is not this is not true. It, the, the mom could not just say the guy is abusive to me emotionally. And then the guy just not doesn't get to see his kids anymore. There would need to be evidence that the the dad was a danger to the children. Real, real quick. What's the stat? Uh, I, I know that there is stats on women initiating divorce more. Mm -hmm. But how do we say that? you know, uh, fatherlessness is predominantly driven by women. Is that, is that what you were saying? Yeah, because women are choosing to leave and the number one reason is irreconcilable differences. But that's but, when you're talking you... about, that's when you're talking about single mothers who are a result of divorce. If we're- Yeah, and you're also talking about single mothers that then 
divorce and then get full custody of the kids and then just take the kids and that's it. I don't understand how it's the women's fault. If women initiate the divorce more, okay, why are they initiating divorce more often? What is it that men are doing that are making women want to leave? Looking at single mothers who were never actually married, it's mm -hmm. not, it's a very different group well, but, of people. But the, whole, but the whole point is women have all the power here. We have a million choice. You get to choose whether or not you get pregnant. Abortion's legal. So you're, we are a hundred percent. Yeah, you can choose to get an abortion, but if you do choose that, then just know you've chosen to be evil. So there's no, there is zero excuse to make a kid with a guy that's not going to stick around. Zero excuse. None. I mean, I, I, I would also zero. say there's zero excuse. How does the woman know? What if the guy is lying and now it's like nine months, she doesn't want to have a late term abortion. And then the guy's like, yeah, psych bitch, I'm out. And then he just takes off. Should she have known? Should she, like, this is such an insane amount of responsibility to put on the woman for no fucking reason. I, I, I would also zero. say there's zero excuse for a guy to not stick around. Well, but the issue you're getting is- Like, because you're basically saying, but what about the women, though, when we're I'm talking saying, about I'm the saying, man But leaving. the difference is men cannot, cannot opt out of fatherhood, women can opt out of motherhood. And I think we would so, both agree that you should not be able to opt out of motherhood. But right? we can. And it's and not, it's not like my that. point, but should whatever. The, well, like abortion's legal. It's here to stay, unfortunately. I, I don't say this because I'm happy about it. But I mean, in the UK, they're introducing a law where they want to make it legal up to birth. So abortion is legal. And right now, men are not able to opt out of fatherhood. Only women are. Only socially, not physically. W women in the United States overwhelmingly have the right to abort. Correct. Or are allowed to abort. Mm -hmm. Men don't have any say whatso uh, whatsoever. But socially, uh, I looked it up about, it says, according to the U.S. Census Bureau, 20.2% of fathers, about 7 million, are absent dads. They don't live with their... Yo, I just read that stat myself. Based. Uh-oh, what's just pearly things gonna say? Minor children. So Right, that, but why? That, right, right. So right. this stat doesn't literally mean that... <laughs> So absent dads don't exist. Here's a stat showing absent dads exist. Yeah, but why do they exist? Because it's the women's fault, right? She just moves the goalpost so quick. It's impossible to have a conversation with this fucking weasel. 20% of fathers are like getting up and saying, later kid, I'm going to buy scratchers yeah. and then disappearing. Mm -hmm. But my, my point was just that of this, you have men who are like, okay, you're having a kid. I'm leaving. You'll never see me again. Well, but you don't, you don't understand the circumstances because a lot of times women make men dads that don't want to be. They're like, this is something casual. This is, a, you know, situationships are really common. They know that man will never commit. Women make dad. Wait, women make men dads when they don't want to be? Has she ever heard the saying it takes two to tango? Is she a little confused? Does she need to go back to like basic sex ed? They know that man will never commit to them, and yet they still make the choice to have his kid. I think in those situations, if we can legally opt out of motherhood, they should be able to legally opt out of fatherhood. Don't we? We have all the power now. Don't make a kid with someone that doesn't want to be a father. I, I see. I see. You're saying I that I disagree heavily with the phrasing and framing of this, as if it's like the woman's fault. Uh, I do think that there should be more wiggle room regarding paying child support and stuff like this. Uh, but at the end of the day just pearly things any semblance of like a decent point she may have had is completely buried under all of this stupidity that she's spewing right now and acting as if it's just solely women's fault for making men dads when they don't want to be like i see i see you're saying I think, that i think that applies equally to and this is why i don't ironic that hunter is talking about absent fathers um why is that ironic i'm not an absent father why was your dad absent or something is that why it's ironic for you your father. I see. I see. You're saying I think, that. I think that applies equally to, and this is why I don't advocate for promiscuity. Don't sleep with someone that you are not prepared to have a child with. But I, but yeah, but is, again, is, should. But what what's happening? Is what you're that's, you're. that's like this isn't a dream world. You know, this isn't like make a wish. You know, society promiscuity is going to go. It's not. But, but so I'm talking about what's happening. Go are, ahead. Are you saying that a woman who sleeps, like, let's say a woman, yeah. uh, uh, you know, we'll start light. She sleeps with a guy gets pregnant mm -hmm. and then realizes this guy will leave her and doesn't want to be a dad. Yeah. You're saying she should get an abortion? I'm not saying should or shouldn't. I'm saying women have- What? So women have the choice and the control. Then she's gotten pregnant. This hypothetical, you've just, you've just been given a hypothetical about a woman who's been pregnant. She knows the guy doesn't want to stick around. 
should she get an abortion? And you're like, I'm not going to say she should or shouldn't, but see what she's done is every time she has conversations about women, just pearly things reveals the fact that she only hates women. If women uh, get an abortion, they're evil. But you see, the fact that women can get an abortion means that they have all the control, and that means that they're evil for breaking up families. It's always just women bad. Men do not have the choice to opt out of fatherhood. Should or shouldn't, it, it's almost like, okay, I mean, this isn't, and this is where I get frustrated with conservatives. It doesn't matter what I say. Women are going to abort their kids. It's not going to become illegal. So if we're in a society where we can legally not be mothers, if we don't want, why can't men legally not be no, fathers? I, I guess That's all, really? We don't get we anything leave. else? And if wow. So just pearly things and Lauren Chen kind of having a debate? Although Lauren Chen has the kid gloves on massively. This was just embarrassing. There was like not nearly enough adequate pushback given to the insane, stupid shit that Pearl was saying. It was like a big joke to her. Oh, we're, we're just it was just a meme. I really can't tell whether she actually believes this or not. I want to say that she doesn't. But then that would be giving her the benefit of the doubt that she's smart enough to know it's wrong. So I think she probably does really genuinely believe this stuff because, yeah, she's actually that fucking stupid. So this is a two hour long video. I'm definitely not going to watch all of it, but we will watch some of it while we play Fortnite. Is marriage a bad deal for men? Pearl versus Trent Horn. And Trent Horn is actually a Christian conservative type. So, uh. This should be fun. Women have zero interest in being wives. Gen Z women rank men seventh on their priority list, coming behind things like education, travel, and experiences. Millennial women are not much better. They rank men as fourth behind their careers, education, and finances. I personally have interviewed over a thousand women from London to Miami to Vegas and even the suburbs of Chicago. And I can tell you firsthand that most young women have no interest in being wives. This can be shown by women's outcomes and choices. Many men like Trent have been married for years and have no idea what the dating market is like for young people. One out of three women have had an abortion in the United States. One out of four women has an STD. 90% of women have been on birth control at some point in their life. 80% of sexual- oh. oh no. Some of the things she's saying are not even bad. Really active women will contract HPV at some point in their lifetime. The average woman is 5'3 and 170 pounds. On top of that, men can never really know this. <laughs> so? So what? The average woman weighs this much, okay? Sexual past of the woman they are marrying. Dating apps have made promiscuity more accessible and easier to hide. Women have a great incentive to lie about their sexual past. The CDC reports that the average number of sexual partners for a woman is between four and eight. But I can tell you from interviews that I've done that below 10 is considered low nowadays. This is especially crazy considering once a woman has over five- I'm sorry, Pearl, but again, I'm going to believe the CDC over what you say that you see. I have sexual partners, she is less likely to have a stable marriage. After women have had over 10 sexual partners, the chance of a happy marriage drops to merely 14%. Only 3% of women report waiting. All right, can we get to like the actual debate part, please? Because nobody cares about this shit. We've all heard the exact same stats rambled on a million times. Do you think that women should be obedient to their husbands? Yeah, I think that, I think that they should be obedient to their husbands when their husbands give them a rational request or directive, but I think that husbands and wives should lead each other uh, to Christ and to the goodness of their family. So what do you define as rational? Yeah, also, no. The wife's job is not to obey the husband as if she's a fucking child. That's weird. Uh, in accord with reason. So something that does, doesn't go against what reason would dictate. Can I have an example? Of so like, I'm, I'm assuming of, crimes. Of like, something that's like, rational or irrational. Yeah, irrational. Yeah, if a, if a husband says... Like, obviously that, no crimes, right? Yeah, or if a husband says, you know, I want you to um, lose a, a massive amount of weight, for example, that would put someone's... If your husband wants you to do something to change your body that would put your health at risk, I would say that's irrational. Okay, but a normal amount of weight would be fine. I would, right? say, I, I would say I think it's fine for husbands and wives to want each other to be healthy, but it's very quickly that if a husband or a wife asks for a person to be of a certain weight, that can easily be more of a, out of a desire for vanity than for the other person's well-being. But what about health? What about health? I think yeah. it's I think it's good for husbands and wives to want each other to be healthy. No, but I'm asking the husband. Why do you always bring it back to the husband? Because I'm asking about the wife. I didn't ask you about the husband. Because I'm, so saying, I'm saying for the husband, is he can he ask that his wife stays a certain weight? Is that rational? It's rational for him to ask her to be healthy, but staying at a certain yeah. weight your entire life, that's not necessarily going to be healthy. Like saying, oh, I want you to always be 120 pounds. Like, hey, I got pregnant. Oh, <laughs> you're kind of getting past that now. I don't like that. 
that's that would be irrational. That would so that would he would not be allowed to do that under your I, your thought. I think it would be insane if a man said that his wife needs to why? stay a certain. <laughs> why? <laughs> to, to why would... Wait, why would it be insane to say that a woman needs to stay a certain weight even after giving birth? <laughs> why would that be insane? Okay, just pearly things. Apparently, doesn't need to just go back to sex ed. She needs to go back to ed. What's wrong with that? But Pearl, you do realize that it's absolutely like literally there was a joke in the office mm -hmm. where BJ Novak says some supermodels lose weight when they're pregnant. Mm -hmm. That shows that he's just an insane chauvinistic person to demand that a wife stay Why? at a certain weight, even though as you get older, you naturally gain weight. And especially when you get pregnant, you gain at least nine pounds of weight. Mm -hmm. That would be insane to demand that someone stay it? at a certain weight. Women lose it all the time. I fail to see how any of this is relevant <laughs> to marriage, no, by the way. Well, I, I'm, what I'm trying to understand is your mindset. Mm -hmm. So, so why why can't men have standards in marriage? Because if you're saying they can men... have standards, but the standard that you're saying men should have is a fucking insane one. It's so insane. You've got the Christian disagreeing with you. It's so insane. You've got the office making jokes at the expense of what you're saying. Like that's why Pearl. Men can't have standards in their own marriage. Like this, this I is never this said is that. the I never well. Said you're that. you're saying it's irrational for a guy to demand his wife stay a certain weight. Why? Be why is that to wrong? To stay a certain weight his, the, during their entire marriage. Why? Why is that wrong? Because I, I've seen women do it. Would you like me to answer the question? I love how like this guy is clearly been married a long time, and he knows that like marriage has its ups and downs. People's appearance change. Uh, things naturally happen as people get older. This, that, and the other thing, and just pearly things like the the petulant child just like why 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 but why though just go ahead okay because biologically we our bodies change over time they'll naturally gain and lose weight in different circumstances and your worth as a spouse mm -hmm. whether you are a husband or a wife is not derived by your weight that's just a shallow thing now i think that both husbands and wives should but encourage the other to, to should, should encourage it's your job to be attractive i think husbands and it's wives should both maintain attractiveness <laughs> right, but why do you always like why do you always have to bring it back because right why do you, now why do you right only now, focus right on now, women right now because we're asking about the deal for men so I'm looking at this from the man's point of view. What does a man get out of it? He, is this a good deal? He, gets, he can't, he get, he gets he can't a woman, even ask for an in-shape wife? He, gets a woman he can't even say 120 pounds? Can, can, I, can, I, can I answer the question? I'm asking. Yeah, I'm he, asking. he gets a woman who's promised to stay with him, even though statistically he'll gain 30 or 40 pounds. And? and that, does, that's, does she have, that, does she women's job right? has far more of a job to be beautiful than men. <laughs> Dude, statistically, actually, men gain way more weight when they get married. Uh, okay, and what's your fucking point? Dude, she's not even trying to hide the bias. She's not even trying. She's like, yeah, it's fine for men to go get fucking fat. But if the woman gains so much as one extra pound after birthing a child, divorce. That's right. You know, men's job is to protect and provide. So do women, do women like, have what, a right what to- What is wrong with a man asking that she stays a certain weight? Because it's, it's shallow. It's fine to ask someone to be healthy, mm -hmm. and it's fine to encourage your spouse to maintain attractiveness, not to just let yourself go. Mm -hmm. But that's the same for husbands and wives. Neither mm -hmm. should just let themselves go. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, not... each one should each one should be merciful, knowing that and time and age come for all of us. The reason that the obesity, I've looked that up before. I like how she also keeps getting so butthurt when he brings up men also, but yet she's not understanding that like, yeah, this is about the deal for men right now, but how men behave how men treat people is going to affect the deal for them. Like that's going to play a role. So this guy bringing it back to, yeah, I think both partners should be uh, keeping each other accountable, things like this. He's right because you should treat others how you want to be treated. Or the reason that the men are more overweight than, than women mm. is because you include it. You don't look at visceral fat. So like when men are a high, very high like muscle percentage, they're still considered overweight more so than women. So a more accurate way to look at that is visceral fat. And women have higher rates of visceral fat than men. So actually women are more, and if you look at extreme obesity, women are more obese. Yeah. So yeah, so I don't know why you're like kind of lying. Okay, because, can we, lying, no one's lying. He's literally telling, of, talking about the likelihood uh, of weight gain in a marriage. That's it. He's not just saying that like men on average are overweight more or something that stat trying to act like men are equally obese they're not well they're men, not. Are, so, men are still overweight but that still doesn't right, but, that but still doesn't show none that. of that okay, shows so marriage is next a bad question, deal for men should men marry women that have had abortions should men marry women yes that have no. had abortions Absolutely. should men marry women that have had abortions i wouldn't say it's a deal breaker oh he should not have just let her just like change the combo like that she's being so fucking stupid she knows she's getting fucked up too in the conversation clearly and that's why she's trying so desperately to like get out of it 
Should men marry women with STDs? I wouldn't say. Here, Before let me, I, women have herpes, should men marry them? I'm going to answer. Okay, go I would like to answer your question. Just, I would say, just as it is not a disqualifier for if a man facilitated an abortion, and 90 percent of so for every woman who chooses to get an abortion, 90% mm -hmm. of the time, mm -hmm. the man is actively or passively supporting it. So just as it's not I'm a deal breaker for a woman. I'm asking for the future man. I'm not saying this, that he asked her to abort his, this is another man's kid. She's had an abortion. No, what I'm saying is I'm applying an equal standard here. Mm -hmm. So I would say that it is not a deal breaker for a man to marry a woman who's had an abortion, just like it's not a deal breaker for a woman to marry a man who would facilitate an abortion. Should men marry women that have slept with over 10 men? Should they marry someone who's slept mm -hmm. with over 10 men? Mm -hmm. I would say that when you have more sexual partners, that's definitely a, that's something that's concerning. That could be a red flag. So you would but say that, no? But that doesn't apply. I'm not going to say <laughs> that someone is unmarriageable because of one particular trait. What about porn? Okay, what, what, what about, about women that have, that have participated in porn? Should men marry women that have participated in porn? I would say that that's definitely a red flag, but it is not a necessarily, a, it's not a deal breaker. You have a son? I, can, can I ask the questions? Part? Because you Dude, can keep asking questions. so annoying. Because I just, I, it just would be easier if I got a yes or no, because you keep giving me these roundabout, and I'm just like, yes no, or no. No, I'm giving you good answers. <laughs> It'd be really easy if you could just like say yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, instead of like elaborating and kind of, you know, like refuting my points also. That'd be really a lot easier. Right, okay, so I'd like to finish go about ahead, pornography. Go ahead. Go ahead. I would say it's not a deal breaker if a woman had participated in pornography. Uh, much the same way it is not a deal breaker. Well, it's something to be very, very worried about. So I'll answer it this way. Uh, it's very hard for me to find anything that's a deal breaker for marriage, except for maybe diagnosed uh, severe mental illness, for example. Um, or addiction to drugs, things like that. But that would apply to men and women. So when it comes to pornography, I would say it's very concerning if you have, a, if a woman had previously engaged in pornography, just like it is very concerning if a woman chooses to marry a man who's previously viewed pornography. But this is my question. It's like, why can't men have standards? And, and this is what I've noticed from the trad community and like what the is, conservatives. It's like the quality of women keeps going down and down and down. I, I, and we can't even definitively say, hey, maybe we shouldn't marry porn stars. Maybe we shouldn't marry overweight women. You know, it's like we 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 constantly get rid of standards for men. No, I find and, standards and, as and, long and as we can... the standards that you're setting are ridiculous. Like the standards you're setting, Pearl, are don't gain weight even if you're fucking having a baby. Like the standards you're advocating for are ridiculous. And she keeps just bringing it back to this weird um what's the fallacy called that she's engaged in oh yeah the mott and bailey i think that's what it's called the mott and bailey where she has the the passive and rather agreeable take of why can't men just have standards is it what's wrong with standards you know obviously nothing that's a very agreeable position her far more extreme position of course is those standards should include uh, telling a woman that she shouldn't be able to gain any weight even if she's pregnant. <laughs> like, it, it's, she's trying to dumb it down to sound more agreeable when she's clearly in the wrong here. Can't even, no, no, you're not, because you're not even definitively saying you shouldn't marry a porn star. Mm -hmm. You would never in a million years tell your son to, ma to marry a porn star. An active, currently working porn <laughs> no, star? Even a no, previous you said, porn you said star. former. E even former. You you would never. Come on, someone you love. Okay. And this is this is why. Can this I is why. You can keep talking or you can ask me a question. Because I was going to say, I do believe in standards, Pearl. I mm -hmm. just believe they should be applied equally. So if mm -hmm. women have a past in porn and that makes them unmarriageable, mm -hmm. fine. Then we should just say any man who's looked at porn, don't marry him. No, the, the equal, the equal, is it okay for men to look at porn? You can that during your cross sure. The equal equivalent would be a man that's participated in porn. That, that would be the equal equivalent if we're, if we're really going to go apples to apples here. But what okay, I'm asking... my bad. Let me correct myself. I didn't realize this was like the cross-examination where she gets to ask him a bunch of questions like that. Okay, my bad. Thing is, okay. And there's quarter, lots of men who participate in that. A quarter, you know, a, a quarter of women, uh, up to a third, have an STD. Should men marry them? Should they marry them? <laughs> yeah. Just the, the same reasons would apply if you ask women, should they marry men who have STDs? Because men, men have lots of STDs. What's, and if it's okay to marry but why, them. But why is it what about the men? It's like the Because men and women thing. are equal. Men and it's women are equal. We should treat thing. them equally. It's the crazy. I don't think men and women are equal. Are they equal no. in value and dignity? No, I, Sorry, I, just, just I, real I'm quick. Just real quick. A, Trent, Sorry. you can ask questions in your cross examination. Sure. Yeah. Pearl, so I'm, not, I'm not coming at this from a religious point of view. Um, what, what I am saying is that you keep telling men to lower their standards. Because you were saying, wife up these whores. 3% of women, you know, 100 years ago, men got a virgin. Jeez. They got a virgin, four plus kids. 3% of women are waiting till marriage nowadays. You're saying, wife Ooh. them up anyway. Doesn't matter the risk. Who cares? Do you have a question, Pearl? <laughs> so, yeah, my, I'm going to go back to STD is not a deal breaker, yes or no? No, they're not a, they're not okay. a deal breaker for men, okay. they're not a deal breaker for women. Okay. On top of that, porn, oh. not a deal breaker? Having been involved in pornography? Mm-hmm. No, it's not a deal breaker, but it's something to be very concerned about. The same as if a man had been behind the camera doing OnlyFans work or working at OnlyFans. But if he's truly repented, then people can really change and we should give them mercy, whether they're a man or a woman. People can change, but it doesn't mean they statistically do. Mm -hmm. And women that have made those deci mm -hmm. decisions, statistically, the, the grass, statistically, it's not, it's not a happy ending for most of them. So that, that's the other question. Why would you sign a, Would you ever sign a business contract that someone's paid to leave? 
if, so me and you me and you are going to do business and i get a oh bunch no. of money Here and your children highly you would sign that contract <laughs> if you get my children because mm -hmm. maybe we're yeah. pairing our youtube channels together yeah probably not going to sell <laughs> off my kids on that but it's very common in business deals pearl where if you have a high value uh, part business partner and you really want them to be a part of the venture you might include things like a buyout clause or severance pay that's not that uncommon to ameliorate risks or to encourage them to take part in the project okay so would you oh. <laughs> would you sign the contract or no when i sign a contract mm -hmm. you've made it very where i'm paid to leave where you're paid to leave if you're my business partner mm -hmm. It depends how much and what risk. If you, but if why, you is it, why can't you answer the question? Because your question is underdefined and it can't be answered. You've asked it in a very vague way, so I can only give a vague answer. And okay, me and you sign a business deal, and in that business can't even deal, it, and I, and in that business deal, I get your whole YouTube channel if I leave, and I get your children. Are you signing it? No, I'm not. Exactly, that's okay. the point. No, you're not because signing you, because it. You and, and this is the thing: they act like okay. it's one-off instances, and this is what the, this is what the academics tend to. Because do. if you think that's what marriage actually is, you're a fucking retard, Pearl. Literally. Like, you're an idiot if you think that's what marriage is. No one's paid to leave. You can look at the statistics. Women suffer financially more so, disproportionately, and for longer periods of time uh, after divorce compared to men. Whether they have kids or not, alimony or not, men recover financially far faster than women do uh, after divorce. To do they'll say here's a study funded by this organization or here's another study and they want you to not believe what's in front of your eyes mm -hmm. men are not signing up for marriage today and if, you can and you can you can say it's that marriage is a great deal for men but men are naturally logical they do what makes sense a hundred years ago men were still men same software they married women in three months there's a reason it's gone up to three years i would give i would sign a contract where if you have to undergo if you're undergoing significant risk and the whole point of things that if mm -hmm. a marriage divorces is that women undertake risks. If they come and then they give up their careers and they stay home and raise children, for example, and they the do that. The majority of women are doing that. The majority of women are not doing that statistically. Okay. Three out of four women are working, so okay. it's not the majority. The point is, if they go and do that and they They're take not. part in a marriage, you're to. going to be taking, you're undertaking risks when you're involved in marriage. Well, as mm -hmm. I stated before, women are twice as likely to end up in poverty after divorce than men. Yeah, because women, women are bad with money. No, women, what happens? Oh women, 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 usually... women have 80% of the world's debt. Women are not good with money. And many men have many, and many, and many, and many, and many, and many, and many, Women have, 80, women, have, women have 80 women have 80 of the world's debt and the other thing that, that they don't take into account is that in this country men have more and, and eight, women have 80 percent of the world's debt women are not great with money and men earn more as well too and and the thing is you don't you're not addressing the suicide problem do you not think I, that's a problem of course suicide's problem it's more of a problem for men who never marry I'm asking in divorce. They're nine times more likely to commit suicide after a divorce. They're nine times and, more and, likely and, and, than and a divorced and, 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 woman. You're, you're and, misreading and, the statistic. And, 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 and in family court, when if they find within five years, many men do commit suicide. What do you think? You think it's just made up? The, you think it's just fake? Every, no, all these I, men, no, all these men that are saying my life, my life is ruined. Yes, because, yeah, let him answer it. Go. Go ahead, go ahead. No, because I've actually read the studies. Okay. And the problem is you're doing <laughs> the comparison fallacy here. You're just thinking, hey, if you get married, this bad thing can happen to you or this bad thing can happen to you, and that's true. Mm -hmm. But if you choose to not get married, you can also have many bad things happen to you. You can grow up and have no social connections. You become a recluse, and you're more likely to commit suicide. You're more likely just mm -hmm. to not take care of yourself. And the statistics show mm -hmm. that on average, ever married men, including divorced men, live longer, are healthier, and rate their mm -hmm. lives as happier than never married men. Women, it's a statistical women, because fact. Women, because women date happy men. That is true, by the way. That, yeah, like, marriage does have with it its own benefits. But, of course, that's assuming that the marriage is a, a healthy, happy like functional marriage men so they women women pick women pick for these things how do you what know do you, because i'm a woman <laughs> i'm a woman i know what we pick for we like tall handsome good looking men is every married that's, man that's, tall that's handsome who, and good looking not every but he's usually one of those things <laughs> he's usually one like he, he's usually either successful or handsome or good it's what women don't marry homeless men off the street there's a big difference between tall <laughs> so, handsome so, and successful so and homeless saying, I, there's also average no, and so my point is women tend to pick above average men we see this on dating apps women swipe right five percent of the time the number one way people are meeting that's under 30 because, is on dating that's apps because on dating so, apps so, but three you don't times know what you're talking about. Not... women are far more selective though this is just a nightmare to listen to oh my god Without dating, like, because on dating apps, Pearl, the reason that women are so choosy is because there are three to four times as many men on dating apps than women. Mm -hmm. So men will be constantly swiping right. Women can be more choosy in that environment because there's just so many more men. But in real life, when you look at a 1993 study, another yeah, one by before, Taylor before and media, another one in ta another one by Taylor Taylor done in before 2011. Media. I would like to finish before Taylor and Taylor study in 2011 shows that men and women, when they get married, they tend to be within the same social range mm -hmm. and attractiveness. So while for dating and hookups, you're correct. Men, women on social media apps because there's so many men to pick from go for the higher quality men. men when it comes for marriage people tend to marry within their own social and attractiveness value bracket right but that doesn't that doesn't disprove what i'm saying 
women pick a small percentage of men no, when that, given that, the choice. That's not yes. true because but I'm talking about marriage. That's so women. not true because women on average pick people that are similar to themselves. Like what he just said. We know this data. <laughs> We're talking about marriage, not Tinder. <laughs> but, when, but that's the number one way people are meeting under 30. And that's the thing. Like a lot of a lot of you guys are so out of touch. You, you don't <laughs> see like these studies take years to come out at some time. I can tell you firsthand what's going on because I actually talk to the people. No, I agree. It's dumb and, to try and, to meet your spouse and, on Tinder. And, and, that's <laughs> right. But that's what's happening. Right. That, that's where the world is going. Right. And, and you're encouraging men to clean up women's mess. And, and I say men shouldn't have to do that. Don't. Men shouldn't have to sign a contract where women are paid to leave. I, I think it's so simple. If I, people are paid to do the wrong thing, why wouldn't they do it? Why? Why would I'm not saying every woman will, but every woman can. Woman no is, one is, but no one is paid to leave in marriage. That's just bullshit. Is going to want to say, I gee, think, you know what would yeah. be great? Don't ask questions. Let her go. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll go. Well, you I, can answer. I, it, I, I'll answer it. Uh, uh, no, the women aren't saying, gee, it would be so awesome if I married this guy and then got full custody of the kids. So now I'm a single parent and I have to take care of these kids. Good thing he sends me four hundred and forty dollars a month to help with that. That doesn't sound like a great deal to me. Four hundred and forty dollars over eighteen years is over hundred k. That's life changing money. That is life changing. Is the thing that <laughs> then why don't you just save four hundred bucks every month? <laughs> Give me a fucking break, dude. This is this is painful. Okay, I can't I can't do this anymore.